He holds the victory. Him alone. His works, not our own. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, not of the letter, not of the what we're reading in his word, the scripture, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And I looked and I looked up the meanings. Um, so letter in in Bible, the meanings that I found for letter is written words, epistle, document, acknowledgement, or book. And when it says that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life, it's speaking of man's understanding when reading scripture man's own understanding leaning in on our own understanding of of his word of scripture of these epistles these letters from um from the disciples all throughout the new testament our man understanding kills and it kills true salvation the understanding of true salvation it deprives and i looked up the meaning of kills and some of the meanings for that is to deprive of spiritual life so if you are leaning on your own understanding of what of the words that you read in your bible and you're not praying to Jesus and asking him for the real understanding, the meaning behind it, then you're being deprived because you are not seeking him. You are not allowing his spirit to minister to you, to teach you, to grow you. Um, okay, moving on. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly hold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? So let me just break that down again. But if the ministration of death, what is death? Well, we know that the curse of the law is death. Sin is death. When we are not truly truly coming to believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as the, the one true Messiah, the one-time sacrifice, unblemished sacrifice, once for all, when we are not coming to truly believe in Him and His finished work on the cross, that, that, is, that means that we would be holding on to the law and the works of our own selves, which keeps us under the curse of the law. And the curse of the law leads to death. Okay? Not salvation. Um, so. So that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses. So if, if what was written that leads to death, okay, let me back up. The strength of sin is the law. The curse of the law 
leads to death. So, if ministering that doctrine of death written in engraved stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away the glory of the old was to be done away and it was done but it was fulfilled sufficiently by Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMashiach How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? So when the Spirit, the Lord's Spirit that he left for us is so glorious, when we allow his Spirit to minister to us and through us, that is glory. That is glorifying our God our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, condemning, condem condemnation comes from those who are still glorifying the law and works. They are not truly accepting the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And his resurrection. So, for if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. How, how does one have righteousness, true righteousness? Not by our own works, not by the laws. It is by Jesus Christ accepting his gift of grace, of his glorious sacrifice, his finished work, and that he died for us to cover all sin and to cleanse us and make us new. And he, he rose again on the third day and he left us his spirit to minister to us, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong right now, to minister to us, to make us new from the inside out. And I forgot what I was going to say. Um, and, and it's His Spirit that brings us to righteousness all glory to God, all glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and His Spirit who teaches us. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excels. For if that which is done away was glorious, the law because Jesus fulfilled the law because he knew we could not. He knew we would fall short no matter what. As long, so long as humanity is in the flesh, so long as we are in our flesh, we will always fall short. His sacrifice is enough and it was enough and it forever will be enough. So, for if that which is done away with, fulfilled by Jesus, was glorious, much more that which remains, salvation through the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that is what remains. He holds the victory forever and ever. Much more, that which remains is glorious. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Um, the new has supplanted the old. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished the children of Israel have a veil put put on by Moses by the the commandments they have a, a veil over them that blocks them from seeing the end of that which is abolished because they are under the curse of the law because they rejected the messiah when he was here and they continue to reject the messiah has yet to come they rejected jesus christ our lord and savior that is why they are blinded they are veiled to look to the end which is the victory through jesus christ our lord and savior the son of god which whom they denied um but their minds were blinded for until this day remains the same veil untaken away in the reading of the old testament which veil is done away in christ so when we come to believe in Jesus Christ and his finished work, the veil begins to lift. This is just, I'm letting him speak through me. The veil becomes, or begins to lift. And we as true believers who believe in his finished work on the cross, little by little, he gives us revelation after revelation, opening wider our eyes to see opening wider our ears to hear what the spirit is revealing the spirit of the living god jesus christ wow and all glory to him um and he sheds away our old self our flesh our sinful nature and he reveals things that man cannot see especially if they are focusing on the law or in the works their own works I mean and then when when we are redeemed when the rapture happens Wow the veil which is the restrainer which is the holy spirit which is in the bride the bride and the bridegroom the voice of the bridegroom will no longer be heard and the bride will no longer be heard and we go up and the holy spirit goes up with us the restrainer goes up with us so then the veil is completely lifted and then then the children of Israel will begin will be able to see what they missed all along. Wow, glory to God. Thank you for that revelation, Lord. Um Wow. But even unto this day when Moses is read, when you read about Moses, the veil is upon their heart or when they read about Moses in their in their books um, nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away wow, I'm getting emotional <laughs> now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty wow where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We are set free from the bondage. We are set free from the law. We are set free from that which we would fail. That, what we would fall short of. We are set free. 
glory to God. And when the when the, the deliverance happens, when the rapture happens, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the spirit of the Lord will go up and then we go up with him and we we receive the ultimate rest, the liberty. Wow. And and then later the the spirit of Elijah and Enoch come for the new witnesses. Wow. Wow, this is such a good reading. Thank you, Jesus. Um but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as the spirit of the Lord wow I think I'm gonna end there that's I'm feeling the Holy Spirit so strongly right now I hope you are too and I really um I really uh am, am so looking forward to our redemption but um i do want to encourage those who may be stressed out why why haven't we gone up yet and all that stuff it is soon everything everything seems to be falling into place and the more that i see happening in the world the more that i realize why it hasn't happened yet there's he's very our God is very strategic in how he does things and everything has to be you know made ready right and most importantly if you're feeling sad or distraught or struggling because we are not with him we're not physically with him or the rapture hasn't come yet remember this that jesus is so loving and so merciful that he wants he wants to give every last second of a chance an opportunity for that last person to come to him and be saved and kept from the hour of temptation kept from the great tribulation and so that if you if you focus on that and how loving he is to do that and you focus in how you will be protected because he will never leave you nor forsake you um in the meantime before he comes then you can't be as sad or distraught about it i love you in christ god bless i hope you have a great um rest of your weekend.